Hey, well, welcome to the podcast. I am Joel here with my dad. And I'm Rick, and we're glad you're here today. This is going to be a great one. Yeah. So, Dad, normally this podcast is about stuff that you taught me growing up, things I learned from you, uh, things you did really well, sometimes things you wish you maybe done a little different. But today uh, is very up to date because it's something I was literally just downstairs talking to you about, asking you about. Here I am, 40 something years old. I think I'm 42 now. And I'm still asking for your advice on this. And it's about stuff that I think we all go through seasons where things aren't happening as fast as we wanted them to. Um, I think we'll call this episode surfing with Jesus because Mm. you gave a great analogy. I hope you'll give it here in a second. But the idea that, well, I'm in a season right now where I know I've got a lot of like in me, this like this, a lot I want to share and stuff. I feel like I'm supposed to say and do and, but, the doors just aren't opening like I want them to. And I've seen that there's this weird balance of where like sometimes you just need to kick doors open and sometimes you need to sit back. And I remember when I was 18, we read this book called Experiencing God by Henry Blackaby. And one of the things he said is he said, don't just do something, sit there. And I remember as an 18 year old, I was like, that's the worst advice ever. You got to make things happen. And there is an element of the people that things happen for are the people that are making things happen. But I've done a lot of, well, we called it rowing down downstairs when we were just talking this, you know, rowing. And I just get worn out when I know that like I can row and row and row, but if God just decides to blow in my direction, all the rowing I've done was pretty (laughs) meaningless anyways. I could have just sat back and ridden the wave. So let's talk about what you just shared with me downstairs um, about for people that are in that season right now where you say, man, I know there's a lot more in me. I know there's way more in me that I'm supposed to be doing. But man, I've been, you know, sometimes maybe you've tried to kick doors open and the, they're not going anywhere. So yeah. you feel stuck, you feel trapped, you feel like you can't be all that God's called you to be. What do you do when you're in that position where you feel like the the, the wind is just not blowing in your direction? Well, yeah, what you're talking about, I uh, a couple of things uh, go with the surfing analogy. Yeah, that was a great analogy. Surfing and sailing both have a lot of the similar analogies. And I've had times when I've had both things sort of happen to me, but I remember the surfing deal. I, uh, I, uh, when I used to surf the North shore in Hawaii, <laughs> right. okay. It was more like in your dreams, the South yes. shore of uh, Pottery Island. Of Corpus Texas, Christi. Corpus right. Christi. Yeah. <laughs> you know, big three foot. Hey, it's a big day. Three foot waves out there. Wow. Let's go catch them, man. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So I did a little bit of that. And, um, Something I, I uh, learned was that uh, there's a whole lot of time in Corpus Christi, particularly when there are no waves rolling in. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, we, the, the whole story comes back. I was, uh, when we first went to Guatemala, um, we didn't get mail for a long time because we were busy raising support and then we moved down there and then it took a while for mail to catch up with us because there was no mail service. Somebody had to hand deliver it. And so for, I'd been like immersed in Guatemala for about three months and working with the poor and working out in villages and just seeing the poverty and the, just as a newbie, really overwhelmed by the needs and the needs of the people. And then all of a sudden I get this, uh, get our mail in and get a couple of Christian magazines. And, and I'm looking through these Christian magazines and well, it's charisma, charisma magazine. And there's a whole full color page spread of come to this miracle conference. If you don't come to this conference, you may not get into heaven. If you do, it won't be in the best place in heaven. You know, it's just this, like, this is going to change your life in the world forever. That sounds like nowadays, if you don't forward this meme that yeah. you know, an angel loses its wings. That's right. yes. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> an angel just died. Yes. So um, yeah, I was like that. Okay. So then I flip the page and then there's a, come on this Christian cruise. Your life will never be the same again. You know, again, a full page color spread ad, you know, this Christian cruise with these Christian and leaders and then I flipped the page again and there's this little bitty little sidebar ad black and white and it was just this poor little kid and for $15 a month you can feed a kid you know what I'm thinking just the contrast just kind of blew me away and I thought god what is happening did you really go to the cross bleed and die for Christian cruises what is going on here mm. and I had this flashback in my mind to those surfing days in Corpus Christi and when you're when nothing's happening when the waves aren't coming and everybody's just kind of kicking back on their board and they're chatting for a while and one of those cabbage head uh, uh, jellyfish will float by and before long 
Somebody will pick one up and he'll see a guy over there's guy's back turn. He'll pick up those cabbage heads and he'll pitch it to him, whack him in the back, you know, and then they'll turn around. They start. I'm guessing those don't them. sting. They're, those aren't the, no, okay, those don't okay. sting. They're the okay kind. And uh, then some guy will sneak off his surfboard and come up under somebody else and dump him over. And, they, you know, they're just. They just start goofing around. Just goofing around. And so I, I saw this picture just these of these surfers just goofing around. And this phrase came to my mind and I was thinking about all these stuff that was going on the Christian cruises and the Christian conferences and all this stuff. And this phrase popped in my mind entertaining themselves while waiting for the wave mm. and i thought you know there's probably there's nothing wrong with those surfers goofing around out there because <laughs> there are no waves you can't surf right you could i mean they could go paddle around you could paddle around if you want to but that wears you out and that's no fun and then you're worn out when the wave comes mm. and so it's better to just kind of be ready and keep your eye on the waves and wait for them to roll in and so it's kind of the same deal there there's nothing wrong with Christian conferences, nothing wrong with cruises, there's nothing wrong with all that stuff, you know. But it's not really what the kingdom's all about. You didn't go out there to paddle around on your board, you went out there to surf. Yeah. Okay, so let's bring this back to my situation because this is really all about me. I'm yes. just kidding. Um, <laughs> I'm tired of all of that stuff. So yeah. my question is, do I need to just find something to do? I mean, I've got, here's the thing. But if you I'm find something to do, it's going to be stuff. Right. So like, here's the thing. Like, I remember one of the things you taught me is you always do the last thing God told you. If you're not getting direction, you always do the last thing God told you. So I'm looking for bigger and better. Completely. Right. So I'm looking for bigger, completely. Yeah. Make yeah. sure you do it to the completeness, fullness. Uh, that happened with me with when uh, I was in college. I think it was about my junior year and I was just stressed out about having to pay for college with cash and working like 40 hour a week. And this guy smiling face is like, hey, how would you like to get out of college free and Whoop. get paid a salary? Pay and I was like, it. yes. And he's like, all you got to do is sign right here. And I was like, oh, the military. That's great. So I remember calling you and you're like, yeah. well, and you were in the military. So I was like, oh, dad's going to be so proud of him. And you're like, ah, it seems like you're feeling a little stuck in the direction. Maybe, you know, you need to look, what was the last thing you were told to do? And then you'll get your direction after you complete that. And sure enough, that's how it went down. So in the situation I'm in right now, it's kind of a parallel situation to that where it's, yeah. I know what I'm doing, right? So I'm spending a lot of time writing books. Um, and I think right now COVID-19 has compounded this, right? Yeah. Because at least when you're out there moving and doing things, like there's an illusion that something's happening. Right, right? exactly. And yeah. we're all stuck at home right now going, ah. So I'm getting really frantic because all I'm doing literally day in and day out is doing calls with people online and writing. And so I don't want to, I back to it is like, I'm not trying to entertain myself. It's not like I'm distracting myself with stuff right, right now. Um, it's that I want more, but there's nothing more that can be done right now than what's in front, front of me, unless I invent something to do, which I could do, but I've yeah. done that in the past and it just came to nothing. And mm -hmm. I was just frustrated and angry and just dis disappointed with God. Yeah, if you, uh, then let's say if you want to paddle around, you can paddle around. You might see some nice views and stuff. Or taking the sailing illustration because I had right. this situation happen too. And again, I had a little sailboat in Corpus Christi, a little, real little one, you know. And um, okay, well, hold on. I just got what you're saying. So you're you're comparing. That was a broad picture comparing the 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 church in general when when God is kind of in between these big moves that are clear when He's moving. We find things entertain ourselves. So on an individual level. Um, yeah. God does things in our lives individually. Yeah. There are seasons. And so you're not life. saying go to a conference and get entertained. No. You're saying that it you're it's tempting to just figure out something to do. do so something. You feel like, yeah, I got you. And there's okay. nothing wrong with doing something. I mean, you know, but maybe God's just giving, I mean, he believes in rest just as much as he believes in work. Yeah. Which, which is a, that's a, a bit frustrating for yeah. type A's because well, in our culture too, if you're yeah. resting too much, you're lazy. Right. Like I, I, Karis, my sister, she's that type three on the Enneagram. And she's like, no, you must fill every moment with success. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. uh, okay. So, but think about biblically, think about like the apostle Paul. It, it's funny. Let me, don't let me forget that thought, but I was listening. There was some thing I was watching on TV and some country Western singer was saying, yeah, with this COVID virus, I got more time to think. I'm not traveling. I can't be on the road. And I'm writing all these awesome songs, you know, and he goes, this has really been good. And I'm thinking, yeah, a little more time to think. And you think about like the apostle yeah. Paul and what did he do? He spent a lot of time, you know, we've walked Prison the Jesus gives you a lot of time there. to think, right? <laughs> Prison gives you a lot of time. Th walking from Ephesus. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, that's true. Even on the Jesus trail, we just thought about how much time just to walk from Nazareth, Jesus' hometown 
to Capernaum. We didn't even walk to Jerusalem. That was we're no way we're walking to Jerusalem. Yeah, I mean, you know, we took Galilee. Us, we could have done Nazareth to Capernaum in probably two, you know, uh, a day and a half. Well, a f- one full day we could have done it. That's a lot of time to think, though. Yeah, and all you're doing is walking and you're chatting and you're talking. You're with. You. It's just like what we did there, and you realize, wow, that's a lot of time to iron sharpen iron, and you're talking with one another and you're sharing thoughts. Not and to ideas. mention, a lot of them were fishermen. That's a lot of time to think. Yeah, you're out there. Yeah, especially <laughs> yes. when the fish aren't biting all night, like he said. They yeah. fished all night long, and there's nothing, man. What'd you do? You just keep a lot of time to the... question your life. What are we doing out here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they, other than our culture, because even in our culture, we fill every quiet moment mm-hmm. with TV or with our phone or with something. You know, every you get in the car, and instead of a moment of meditation and quietness, you rip on the radio and. So we don't have that time. And I believe God designed us to need those moments of just letting things process. Yeah. I mean, if we had designed man, we'd have said eight hours of sleep. Are you crazy? Why are you going to waste a third of a day? day? Yeah. You know, we're not going to put, put sleep in there, but he, and lots of things happen during that sleep. Your body refreshes, your body renews, your mind renews, things sort out in your brain. They realize you're not really just laying there dead. Things are happening that bring renewal. And so these times of rest, we don't necessarily like them because we're programmed to want to do something and and we're programmed to where I've got to conquer the next mountain or do this. But you think about guys like Gideon, for example, too, and like like one big battle, that's pretty much Gideon, Mm. you know? And then the rest of the time, I mean, he ruled for a while and stuff. And Moses, 40 years and 40 years before he, I mean, he, he served for 40 years, but he had 80 years basically doing nothing. And so... Many times God's preparing us for something big. And if we're out there, um, I told you the term sailing by ash breeze, you know, if we're out there working it up and that, that comes from a, that, that's that sailing example. Right. I, I remember one time when I was wanting something to happen, you know, and I felt like God, what are there? you know, and I, I can't make the wind blow, but it goes back to that sailing illustration now, in Corpus. The wind's almost always blowing, you know, yeah. so that wasn't That's the why problem. It's a there. windsurfing hub. Yeah. It, it's a great place for sailing and windsurfing. But, but what I found is when the wind's not blowing, you can, all you can do is set your sails. Well, that's not all you can do, but the wisest thing to do is set your sails so that when the wind does start coming, you're ready. You've caught it. You're, you're ripping right away. Now in the old days on the old sailing ships, we, um, they had a thing called sailing by ash breeze. What was that book you were referring to? Nathaniel Bowditch, yeah. uh, something, ahoy, Mr. Bowditch or something like that. I can't remember the name of the book, but it was about a, a Christian guy who was a sailor in the early days. He's the guy who discovered the pathways through the sea. He was reading the Bible and says, Oh, pathways through the sea. What are they talking about? And that, and he discovered the, the streams and how you could cross the ocean faster by getting into these streams. And anyway, Nathaniel Bowditch, and in those days, when the wind wasn't sailing, when the wind wasn't blowing, and they're trying to get across the ocean, they would break out the oars, and the crew would go down and just start paddling. And these oars were made of ash, ash wood, and so they called it sailing by ash breeze. Mm. So you're so making the, the breeze, basically. Yeah, you're the breeze. Yeah. I'm the breeze with my ash, uh, my ash, ash pole oar, here. Yeah. oars here, and you know, just like the old Roman sailing ships, you know. And I'm not sailing ship. It is called Carry On Mr. Bowditch. Carry On by Mr. Bowditch. John, John Lee or Gene Lee. I'm not been, it's been, a great inspiring biography. Gene Lee Latham. Okay, yeah. About a, a guy who learned learned several languages and he just started out as a little cabin boy and was a believer and God just did amazing. Uh, his stuff still taught at the Naval Academy. Oh, wow. Some of the things he discovered and things. Yeah, So you so you're talking about so when the wind's not blowing, you have a choice. Right. You can you can take a breath. You can set your sails and then sit back and take it easy for a little while. Or you can if you want to break out the oars and row. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's just you're not going to get very far. Well, I mean, that, and so that's that's what I've seen in my life is like I'll I'll work on something just because I need to justify my existence, and I'll be working really hard at really hard at it, and. I, you can maybe get a little leeway. And then all of a yeah. sudden, like something you totally don't expect, maybe God's favor comes in some random thing you never would have expected. And all of a sudden it's like, click, 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 Boom. click, click. And you're like, well, why did I waste all that energy? Now, is there value in wasting that energy? I mean, it's not even wasted. It Well, is it wasted? That's the question. I mean, is is rowing by Ash Breeze or surfing with Jesus while you're just out there paddling around waiting for his wave, is that is there value in that? I mean, you're probably getting stronger. Yeah, well, it, it, there may be earthly value in it, but I don't know about eternal value. You That's know? a heavy question. I mean, yeah, because again, because I, I wonder how much of what we do is 
I mean, it's me. I mean, if I'm honest, a lot of it's, I, I see that with a lot of churches. A lot of times it got to justify our existence and yeah. people want to know, what do you do during the week as a pastor? Well, yeah, you know. Well, and to just muddy the water, let me just ask it this way. What if you took those times down and did nothing but think? It could be that God would give you an idea that would just, boom, you'd set your sails in a different direction and realize, wow, there's where the wind's blowing. I totally missed it. So just sit on your surfboard and wait. Just sit on your surfboard I mean, that, and they talk about a little that. time with the Lord. Psychologically, they talk about what happens when the default network, when you're not thinking about a specific task, the default network kicks in. And that's why they say the big three places you get your best ideas are in the, the shower. Um, Sleeping for me. Yeah. No, and they say, I think, yeah, in the shower, when you wake up first thing in the morning or... One of the other things, I get my best ideas when I'm mowing because I just check out and mow the lawn. Yeah, but again, some of that has to do with shutting down your soul. We talked about body, soul, spirit. Right. Shutting down your soul, that brain that's thinking, thinking, thinking so that your your the spirit within you can communicate. Your, the Holy Spirit can communicate with your spirit and then bring things to your understanding. There, Yeah, so there's the element of getting understanding in the direction you're supposed to go. But then there's also the element that sometimes God just decides to blow in your direction and launches you 20 years into the future and something you could yeah. never have done on your but own. But a lot of times that's because you've had your sails set in the right direction. You're living right. Mm. You're doing what you know to do. You're, you know, you're, I mean, it's not like you earn God's favor. We understand right, right. that. But I'll tell you what, if you have your sails set in the right direction, if you're living right and there's, there's, it's sowing and reaping. Right, which is where, so that's what I, I mean, I think after our conversation, I kind of was reminding myself the idea that, so right now I've just been spending a lot of times writing, writing, writing books, writing books, writing books, and I'm, and it's, it's getting a little old and there's not a whole lot of other options. Like I'm not out speaking. I'm not out. I was supposed to, we had to cancel a trip to Europe. We're supposed to be doing yeah. some stuff in Latin America, had to cancel that. Right. So, but those are actually planting seeds really. Because the writing, is the writing could, I mean, that could, who knows where that could go in the long yeah. term. Yeah. But man, sure. In the short term, you, you just start to wonder, you like. And and the other thing is you're writing because you felt like that's something the Lord said. Yeah. So I'm saying if you're sitting out here and you're going, oh, writing, well, I'm not really good at it, but okay, I'll start writing. Yeah. No, that's not what we're well, talking about. Well, the more about. I write, the more I realize I'm not really good at it, but I do it. But you get better. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, that's what the Lord said to do. Right. And yeah. So. Way. So it's, it comes back to that, what's the last thing he told you to do? Obedience. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can paddle around and find some entertaining things to do on your board or whatever Yeah. while you're waiting on. The you might even make some amazing discoveries. Yeah. So, okay, now here's where my type A part has an issue with this. And then I also have an issue with this because of I think Jesus said, he said, to whom much is given, much more will be given to those who have none. It will be taken away from them, right? I have seen a lot of people, the reason they see success is because they're out doing stuff and doing stuff creates more success. It comes back to that idea you said one time of you don't wait sitting there with your on your hands. You wait like a waiter. You look around, what needs to be done, who needs to be taken care of, and you run around, scurrying around, taking care of what needs to be done. Um, so that's a little bit different than well, I guess it's the same actually, isn't it? It's well, I answered my own question. All right, let's close the podcast. So what was the answer? No, I <laughs> I missed, did anybody else miss that? No. Well, so the answer is this, is like, there is an element of staying busy, whatever your hands find to do, do it the best you can, even if you know there's more in you than what you're doing right now. Yeah. If there's no outlet for it, you're, you're serving, you're serving, you're doing the best you can. I mean, that reminds me of something I was speaking one time and we had a Q&A Q afterwards and a guy was like, how do I get the rich clients? And I was like, yeah, that's a great question. Everybody wants the rich clients, but the reality is rich people, uh, the rich clients, they don't usually cold call you. They ask their other rich friends who's done work that's done. So what you've got to do is you've got to be creating your best work now so that when the moment comes to stand before kings figuratively, yeah. your best work has been worked up to. But they don't take cold calls because everybody wants their money, right? So yeah. everybody's like trying to get the rich client. But what, well, that's what scripture says. A man who's diligent in his work will not serve before obscure men, but he will serve before kings. Yes, I love that. So be that's, diligent that's in Proverbs, your work. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so it is. There's an element of staying busy with things. So I mean, back to the surf analogy. So what would it be? Practicing your paddling? <laughs> I don't know. Well, with, with the surfing, you know, it's just. I mean, it, it, it just kind of out there enjoying the waves, enjoying where you are, enjoying what it is. You know. Enjoy? And there's nothing You're saying wrong. enjoy life? Yeah, you can do that. What? And there's nothing wrong with throwing cabbage heads either. I mean, it's okay. You know, I mean, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. That's that's part of enjoying life. It's relating. They, I mean, these, this is the way they're relating to one another. So th there would be the element, though, of 
there's nothing wrong with enjoying life as long as you're not enjoying it to the context where as the waves rolling in behind you, you're not even paying attention to see yeah, that need, it's coming, yeah. which is what you were saying with the back to the sailing analogy is set you have you set your sails? Mm -hmm. Have you done everything you can do? Okay, now enjoy life. And the thing is, if I'm taking the sailboard or the surfing illustration, if you're sitting on your board and you're just kind of drifting away and you're, you're out of that flow where the waves are rolling in typically, well, then you're going to have to paddle back over and get in to where they're rolling in. So you kind of, you stay attuned to what's going on, yeah. but you spend some time. And, and you know, it could be that God's giving you some time to focus on your family mm -hmm. or God's giving you some time mm -hmm. to focus on your kids. Which God's I think a lot of us for COVID-19, that's what we've discovered is it's like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Kind of. we, it's so easy for us to forget what's really important because we have all the world screaming at us like, do, 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 you got to do this. And something you said earlier, to justify my existence. <laughs> That's a lot really? of what it is, I think. Yeah, but but that that goes totally against the fact that by our very existence created in the image of God, we have value. Yeah. And yeah, so whether we ever do anything, because if that were the case, then the, the child that's born with some malady that he can't do something, then he's he has no value. Right, you know, I, I heard. Can't a, do. I'll never forget a sermon I heard. Uh, it was a guy that was a big time worship leader for Willow Creek. I cannot remember his name, and he had some sort of a stroke where he just overnight lost his capacity to even talk or play music. And now he's a stalker at Trader Joe's, and um, he had to come to the realization that he can't do anything that, like, that he used to be able to do, and that yeah. was what he got all of his identity from. Um, and because, and this goes back to the fact that God created him and God gave him the gifts. It's like Paul says this. He says, what do you have that wasn't given to you? Mm. And why are you proud of anything? Why are you boastful it's about true. anything? Because what do you have that wasn't given to you? Nothing. Very life and breath. It feels so much like a license to passivity, though. It, well, it's kind of like where Paul said this, he said, what should we continue and sin that grace may abound? Because if you, if you read up to that, it sounds like he's saying, Hey, it's no big deal. You know, grace abounds. It's wonderful. What shall we say that we continue and sin that grace may abound? And what he's kind of saying is, look, if you even have that kind of an attitude, there's something wrong anyway in the core there. Right. And so if you look at this and you go, Oh, well then I can just be lazy. You got something wrong in the core there anyway. Right. Which and it's I, not being lazy. That's my concern is I don't want to be lazy. Yeah. And the sitting around sometimes doing the last thing I was told to do when it's getting a little boring to me. It's not boring, but it's just kind of, I, it, here's the challenges is when you're working on something and you never are guaranteed, say you're creating something, creating some sort of music or art or writing is the worry that what if this never sees the light of day beyond my desk? Yeah, I understand. That is a very... Uh, disheartening feeling. And so you're working on, you know, God's told you maybe, maybe you've been working on, I don't know, people are listening. Maybe you've been working on music or writing or learning a language or something. And when you don't see it, I've been feeling that way about French. I'm getting to the point in French where I realize I don't know anything. And it's just like, yeah. oh my gosh, what am I even doing? This is like a hopeless cause. And you want to throw in the towel, but I don't, it's just. Well, I hope this doesn't sound hyper spiritual, but I think that's where scripture says this is whatsoever you're doing, do it as unto the Lord. Right. Knowing that of him you'll receive the reward. And so, um, you know, again, if you're looking at it just in this lifetime, um, it, it may not open any doors. And it may just be a matter, like in the French, I think it's going to open doors for you. I think it has opened doors for you already. And there will probably be other doors open. But even if not in this life, there, there may be other. We find out they speak French on. in heaven. No, no, I'm thinking other people might be working. <laughs> there may be somebody working on something. They're going, well, I don't, you know, that's not going to open any doors for me. Like you say, I'm painting paintings and they're never going to see the light of day. Well, if you're doing this under the Lord as a work of creativity, then you're reflecting his nature as a creative God. And yeah. maybe that's all there is to it. That, but that can get really dis disheartening. I mean, yeah, it can. when you're working on something, you want it to have an impact. And it can be really disheartening when you're, uh, when you feel like you've been preparing for your day yeah, and it's getting down to the wire and you're like, my day may not be coming. Well, but you never know until that last breath. Like I said, Moses, you know, 80 years, he felt like this is it. I'm going to live in my dad's basement the rest of my life. 80 years old. I'm it, was, still it was even worse. It was his father-in-law's basement. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he's, he's watching his father-in-law's sheep, which watching the sheep is a job they gave to the little kids. And here's 80 years old. And he's out watching his father's father-in-law's sheep. Yeah. What a loser. Mm. What a loser. But you, you never know. And the thing is, again, the bottom line is success or failure is when you stand before the Lord, what you hear him say. Right. And if, if, if you're, you're on the backside of the desert, you know, and, but that's where God wanted you to be. 
than obedience. Hey, well done, good and faithful servant. But so, I didn't impact a thousand people. Okay, so here, here's, I guess, where I would, here's a question I have. Where would you say is the dividing line between, okay, now you're just being lazy, or like the person that's always writing a book, but you've never actually seen a manuscript from them. What are you working on? Oh, I'm working on my book. Yeah. Yeah, right. Like, where's the line between being lazy and making excuses and actually waiting on on the Lord? It's going to be a hard attitude. It's like a surfer that's like, hey, I'm a surfer. Well, what do you do? I go out there and float on my board. Yeah. Have you ever actually caught a wave? Wow, that's scary. scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm a surfer. Yeah. 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 I got the, I got the. How do you know when you're actually I surfing? Got the wax, yeah. Man. Is it? Um. Well, I, I think that would have to do more with an attitude of things, you know? It's like, okay, I can have an attitude of I'm I'm resting, I'm taking it easy, or, I'm, or I can have an attitude of I'm waiting on the Lord. And again, I, that waiting on the Lord, I I've know, seen a I lot of that. people use that as an excuse to, to not do the thing they're afraid of. Yeah, and a lot of times it's fear. And you know what? That's, again, I'm not, I'm not here to judge whatever anybody else is doing, but when they stand before the Lord, is he going to say, look, I told you four or five times, you know, yeah. Go, go, go. Because I do think a lot of times when we're waiting on God, he's the one waiting on us. He's already told us what to do. That's my big fear there. is what if he's waiting on yeah. me? You would know. Because if you don't know, he's the one that's failed. Hmm. Because it's his responsibility to communicate to you what he wants done. So you would know what the thing is you need to do and you would also know you're avoiding it. You would at least know the first step of it. You might not know the ultimate, but he, you would at least know the direction to go. Hmm. Uh, little illustration from that I used several times. when you were a little kid I mean like a little kid you know you could barely sit up straight um, <clears throat> we were playing on the floor and I had a ball and we were rolling the ball and you were just sitting there and I was rolling and then you'd push it back to me and one time it hit your foot and bounced over behind uh, the couch where I could see it but you couldn't see it and so I said Joel go get the ball and you looked and you couldn't see the ball go get the ball and you looked and you couldn't see the ball finally I just said just start moving and when you get closer, you'll see it. <sighs> and it's like the Holy Spirit spoke to me and says, that's what I'm talking to you about. If you'll just start moving in the direction I'm telling you to go, right? you don't see any reason for it. There's no ball over there. I'm looking, there's no ball over there. You start moving and it becomes clear. But that com that falls back into the stay in motion. So it's again, it's that balance of it. It's not one way or another. It's like stay in motion, but stay still. Well, yeah, and some of it's some of it's more of a mental attitude too. Yeah. Um, if I'm just if I'm just doing something to do something, you know, it, it talks about in uh, or to justify your existence as we talk about. Yeah. Yeah. In Corinthians, it talks about um, that the eyes of the Lord are going to as fire; they're going to judge our works, and it, there'll be that which is wood, hay, and stubble, which will be burned up, and there'll be that which is gold and precious jewels, which will survive yeah. the fire. It's in Second Corinthians, isn't it? Yeah, and and I believe that what that's talking about are those things that were done spirit inspired spirit directed those will be the things that endure the fire the gold the precious jewels the things that we just do because it's a good thing to do it's a good thing to do but once the fire of god hits it it's just going to be consumed so if you want a big fire right just do lots of stuff which loops back around to essentially what i think blackby was saying in that it was by the way that was, i said second Corinthians, it was first corinthians three thirteen. uh, -huh. uh what Blackby was basically Don't saying just is, do something stand. Yeah, there. a lot of churches just figure try and figure out things to do so that they yeah. can be like we're kingdom advancers, and he's saying no. God will reveal what you are specifically called to do, and you don't need to just invent things to do for God because they may be good things, but it comes down to that when they stand before God and the fire will reveal it. He'll be God will be like, hey, that was really great, but I didn't need that. Right. Yeah. And, and that, that, of course, Blackabees is a play on the phrase that is so common in the world is, well, don't just stand there, do, do something. something. Yeah, which is my motto. <laughs> yeah. And so he says, don't just do something. Yeah. Stand there. And if you stand there, when it's time for you to do something, you'll have the energy to do it. You'll know what to do. And you'll be quiet long enough to hear what you need to do. And my guess is that will be like the gust of the wind that comes and blows you way past the guy who's been sailing by ash breeze and didn't bother to set his sails. Now, again, if you want to sail by ash breeze, go ahead and roll it out, stoke it out if you want to, but make sure you have your sail set because you don't want to miss that. You don't want to miss that puff of the spirit. You know, this is one guy says, one touch of God's favor. That's right. I love that guy. <laughs> That's what it is. One touch of God's favor. So the essence of it is to wrap up our surfing with Jesus episode or whatever you want to call it, rowing by ash breeze. Um, there are, 
there are going to be times when you know there's more in you and it's probably something God put in you, mm-hmm. but, and, but you make sure you're paying attention, staying alert. And then in the meantime, just kind of enjoy life until the wave comes along that pushes you forward. So you're, yeah. you're, you're, or planting the seeds, like make sure you've planted your harvest. But then once you planted the heart, the plant planted the seeds, you, you're not going to make them grow any quicker by whatever you're doing. What's that? Plant the seeds dancing you around build the ground. Your house or yeah. how's that, how's that per- proverb go? Didn't we decide it was get, get the quote, the price quote before you build your house or yeah, something? That's, <laughs> that's why. No, but you, that, I mean, that's essentially what a farmer has to do. You plant the seeds and then you've got to wait a little bit and you can, you've got some room to enjoy your life while once you've done the work, you've set things in motion. Um, of course you don't want to wait too long because you want to keep planting another round of seeds, right? Because another season's coming, but, but there's the element of that. You just, um, there is a waiting period. And as long as you're doing the last thing you told, you can be confident that I guess that's. And Ecclesiastes talks a lot about enjoy life. Yeah, he does. You know, God's given it to us as a gift to enjoy. Yes, there's things to do, but I don't think that was the primary thing God created man for. Jesus said, I don't call you servants, I call you friends. Mm-hmm. And so my relationship with you, in fact, he calls us sons and daughters. Now, it's not based upon what you do. That's yeah. what a servant is. Yeah. Okay, you're a worthy servant, you know, but um, it's based upon friendship, family, spend time with me, and everything else to take care of itself true that reminded me of something i heard somebody say it said before god can do something with through before you. god can do something through you he needs to do something in you yeah so and, yeah and oftentimes um he's slow to do things through us because we won't allow him to do in us what he's working to do in us yeah so we press on keep an eye on the keep an eye on the horizon a wave is coming keep the sail set yeah get your surfboard pointed in the right direction and when the wind and the waves come you're ready If you liked what you heard, please consider sharing this with a friend. For more information, visit joelmalm.com or rickmalm.com. Thanks for listening.